Are we going for a walk? Hey, okay. you just turn your back on me as soon as I start filming. Are we going for a walk? Nice jump. It's not what we came up here for, but we'll take some. They're in nice shape. Some little puff balls. Okay. I uh, lost my Ontario Knife Company knife, and I now have a Kershaw leak. Just pick enough of these that we can say we did. Hey, Ziggs, because we're after, we're after a better mushroom. So we're gonna fill our pockets. Okay, we're gonna fill our pockets. Here's the good ones. Lion's mane mushroom. Some nice ones. Lion's mane mushroom log gazing. Guess who just sat on their phone? Guess who just sat on their phone like a dum dum? You got it. It was moi. Moi. Guess who just dropped their machete like a dum dum too? Watch your step. Good girl. So we uh, out taking some hericium mushrooms, um, and we're gonna take some home to cook them. Uh, but I'm just gonna start off by saying that. Coming out and cutting trails has been our morning routine for the last couple weeks, and Ziggy loves it. And I owe an apology to Gerber about this machete. So I bought this machete, well there was still snow on the ground, so I bought it at the end of the winter, and I didn't do a very kind review of it at the time, because I'm an axe man. Um, but I, I definitely want to set the record straight about uh, how I feel about this machete now. I'm gonna chop your head off. You're pesky. Hey, you're pesky. Um, this machete, machete <coughs> excuse me, has been, I'm gonna put it away. Maybe not. Um, has been my go-to trail clearing tool uh, every morning for the last few weeks and it's been great. So a couple of things I wanted to say about it. Um, it works great. Uh, it's really good for cutting live tissues. And I um, underestimated the saw back on this machete. I did not give it a fair trial when I tried it out the first time. I basically tried to cut down a balsam tree with it. It wasn't successful. That's not really where it shines. Um, but for stuff about this big where, or this big, where it's a little bit big for you to be whacking at it. Um, I've had great success. Um, or in the fields where I'm trying to clear out some of the regrowth and I don't want to leave a sharp cut um, in the grass, but like a flat, little flat stump. This works great for getting down low and sawing those saplings close to the ground. Um, the other place it shines is for cutting deadwood. So again, smaller stuff. What I've noticed is uh, if I whack away at dead conifer branches, uh, that's not good for the machete, but the sawback works great for those. Where I have hit some dead wood and bent the blade, because um, this does have a fairly flexible, um, soft blade, uh, I've been able to peen it straight on an anvil with a peening hammer. So that's worked really well. 
and also uh, I found that if I just touch the blade up really quickly with a work sharp or a sharpening steel um, and usually from the one morning to the next that I can just spend a minute uh, touch the blade up and it's basically razor sharp again uh, with the steel and then maybe once a week I'll go over it with the uh, with the work sharp and it's um, good as gold again so the grip on this this is a super super grippy handle um, I've actually got a, a pretty good blister uh, on on my one finger from the amount of uh, chopping that I've been doing with this um, but I've found that if I just grab a good pair of gloves and I'm still still rocking these princess auto gloves from months and months ago so they've gone through a lot of duty um, and they're they're kind of like a light breathable garden glove uh, so a glove really makes a big difference using this machete the other nice thing about it is it's got its carrying sheath and that's where where it's going to go right now so I can free up my hands for carrying mushrooms back so let's do a little collect and cook with this lion's mane mushroom I'm going to bring you in for a closer look at it so this is one of our local species of um, lion's mane mushroom and you find them growing on hardwood logs so uh, this is a, a dead maple log um, now that I know that there's lion's mane growing on it I'll probably check this same log again next year around the same time or in the same conditions so it's currently the last week of August and we've had a couple of cold nights which I think really helps for um, getting these guys fruiting and you can see that they grow from uh, a thick base and they have downward hanging icicles or teeth uh, underneath the branches so this is a really really nice specimen I'm going to pick that clean and I'm going to take it back we're going to cook this guy up so this is probably pretty typical habitat for lion's mane mushrooms I'm in a, a mixed hardwood forest um, there's a lot of sugar maple here, sugar maple yellow birch and I would expect to find the lion's mane growing on dead or dying sugar maples and you can see a lot of those kinds of trees around me probably if I do a slow spin while I'm talking here um, so I often find them on on fallen trees but um, you can also spot them uh, growing on standing trees it just makes them a lot harder to get at if they're higher off the ground um, so your best pick, picking is on these these fallen logs so I've um, harvested a few clumps here already the other day and I'm gonna leave a few for the animals and for it to spore out there's a piece that I dropped um, and we're gonna take take this piece home and hopefully there are any little creepy crawlies fall out of it while we're on our on our walk give you a close-up here of the um, teeth on this guy underneath the branching good looking mushroom So anytime I'm uh, walking or clearing trail, I take note of any of these fallen maple trees. Just do a little scan along them. First off, if they're freshly fallen enough, I kind of earmark them to do a firewood pick. Come and cut them up. And then I'm always also on the lookout for uh, some nice fall mushrooms. Actually, I see one behind me on the ground. So let's just have a quick peek here is this something that we can add to our 
mushroom collection. It's a little birch, little birch bowl eat. Um, so you can see the scabers on the stipe, which is the stalk. And there's a couple little bug holes in the cap and it's, eh, it's a little bit soft, but maybe I'll leave that one. I'll leave that one for now. But uh, what did you get? Oh, you're eating a horse hoof mushroom. I think you just pulled one of these horse hoof mushrooms off the tree and she's chewing on it. I noticed there are some mushrooms growing on this fallen. Oh, there's a whole bunch of uh, aphids, it looks like, growing on the bottom of this stump, or maybe that's some kind of fungal growth as well. But I saw something interesting over here, so let's go have a look. Oh! Are these perfect little oyster mushrooms? What have we got here? I think those are perfect little oyster mushrooms. They haven't even spread their wings yet. They're caps. Let's... See if I can steady the camera here without chipping it over. Let's see what we got. Uh, let's take that one. So it is a, a gilled a gilled mushroom. But the stipe, stipe is central on this one. The oysters aren't usually centrally located like that. Uh, and I can't smell today, so I'm not 100% sure on those ones. We'll just leave them, but if I'm back up here over the next couple days, I'll have another look and see if anything's developed. Yeah, we're definitely getting to um, my favorite time of the year. So a couple weeks from now, grow season's going to open. And then about a week after that, brook trout's going to close. So one of my goals is to get out for a uh, fish and a bird hunt on one of the little creeks that are around. I scouted out some new spots when I was doing um, bird observations this spring. So got a few new spots to look at. Try my luck. New trails to walk for birds. Some of them pretty gnarly so hopefully the kinds of places that other people don't get into. I have them all to myself. Crown Land Trails. I'm on um, my private property right now I bought the family property from my mom and now I have endless firewood cutting and other projects on the go which is why I'm out every morning with the dog getting her her exercise and having a look around for uh, things to eat things to do. Hey, what's this? Hey, what's this? Siggy's had her nose to the ground. She's been finding a few vole nests. And she's just gonna eat that vole nest, I guess. Could use that for, well, if you dried it out. A little bit of fire starter if you're doing primitive fires. Okay. Is that what you would use it for, Zig? That middle part is the fluffiest part, though, eh? That's the heart of it. You gonna bring that home? Here, big helper. Hey, you're a big helper. There's some nice chanterelles, but uh, the slugs also think they're nice. So these guys are not, not pickable. Not pickable. 
So we just have lion's mane and puff balls today. Oh, oh, I take it back. These might be pickable. Let's see. Pretty big slug party going on. I don't know. What do you think? This one's just got a little slug. I can brush that, brush that clean. Maybe we have one, one yellow chanterelle in our mix. One dog in the frame. Okay, don't eat my mushrooms. Oh, you're cute. You looking to get in the thumbnail? You want a thumbnail picture? All right, is that what you're after? Okay, let's heat up our pan. Let's get some butter in there. And let's have a close look at these mushrooms. So I like using mushrooms in sauces or in uh, like a mushroom gravy or cooking them uh, in an omelet is a great way to use them also. platter here um, and what we're gonna do is try and do our best to clean these guys off before we cook them and I'm just gonna have them on toast which is a great way to enjoy the flavor of mushrooms so I've had all these mushrooms before I, I know that I don't react to them if you're new to eating wild mushrooms remember that you should always eat a small amount and only have one kind at a time um, so you can judge whether you have any kind of a reaction or a intolerance or an allergy to them. And where's my mushroom brush? I'm going to use this pastry brush here. I think that'll work. So chanterelles uh, in my part of the country, they often are... Um, dirtied up a bit by slugs and so that's what I'm mainly brushing away here sometimes they've got a little bit of dirt on them which you can also brush away puff balls they're usually pretty clean as is um, a good trick is to uh, make sure you always put them in a clean basket and make sure you cut off the any parts that have sand or soil on them cut those off before you put them in the basket otherwise you're just introducing dirt into the mix now these lion's mane are sometimes tricky to clean because they got lots of little crevices so sometimes I just give them like a, a shake and that helps to get rid of any bugs that are hanging out in there and it'll dislodge any of the bits of dirt. I have a pretty high tolerance for little pieces of bark and stuff like that so I don't get too too fussy about um, picking out every last little uh, piece but you know if you're cooking for company um, or you don't like the idea of having a little bit of dirt in with your mushrooms you're going to be maybe a little more careful than I am about uh, cleaning them up. I'll just cut these guys down into smaller pieces. It's also a good way to get inside them and check for any any bugs. And let's just wait for the pan to heat up. There's lots of mushrooms that can really soak up a lot of liquid so I try and get this butter pretty hot before I throw these in because I want them to crisp up a little bit. And I'm gonna cut these puff balls in half, which is always a good idea, anyways, because then number one, you can verify that they're a puff ball by the fact that they don't have any kind of a stem inside of them. You don't want to get fooled by an Amanita egg, for example. And I'm also verifying by cutting them in half that the insides haven't started to uh, become mature spores. So they should just look like a creamy, <clears throat> excuse me, a creamy white mushroom inside. 
And chanterelles, you can chop them up. A lot of the time what I do is like they just um, peel or, or split down the stipe. So I just, um, just break them up into long pieces. And I think we're just about ready to go here. Not quite hot enough. Almost there. Alright, let's, let's cook, sizzle some shrooms. And I'm just going to push them around in this hot butter until they are cooked through. And we'll check right back in in a minute. Bruh. These mushrooms are a little bit mushy. So I'm just gonna try and cook a little bit more moisture out of them. Remember they do have a really, really high water content. And I'm gonna get them crisped up just a little bit. That's how I like them. Okay, those look good. So we're gonna do this trick. Pull them to the side. And get the some of that butter out of them and then I'm going to toast this piece of bread in that butter. This is a good camp trick too if you're cooking on open fire and you want to have toast you just cook it in your bacon fat or something um, after you're done cooking your bacon. Cook, 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 cook. Off. Flip that over. And let's get some mushrooms on toast here. Probably can hear that there's a chipmunk in my rain gutter. He wants to run out, but then he sees me, he gets scared, he runs back in, makes his little chipmunk noise and scratchy business. So I'm in the shade. I, I don't have great lighting out here, but uh, a little mushroom on toast picnic in the great outdoors. Mm. It's good. That's a good breakfast, lunch, or supper snack. Or snack. A good side for a meal. Mushrooms are really versatile, and uh, if you haven't tried wild mushrooms before, they're all a little bit different from one another. Some of them are a lot different from one another. Kind of like apples and oranges. So they're all suited to different different dishes. Hmm. Well, it's a good little start to some uh, late summer foraging. Probably throw some more mushroom videos up on the channel shortly. Getting into hunting season. So hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next one. Got it? You got that one?